Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a Kickstarter preview. This one is for Race for the Chinese Zodiac from Capstone Games and Simply Complex. In fact, it is the third in their line after the Estates and the Climbers. This is a three to five player game in which you're going to be using cards to power your animals through this race. Yeah, this is from Simply Complex and it's just like those other games in that it's very easy to play mechanically but there's layers of depth when you really start to think about it. And in this one in particular, you're really going to be getting into the minds of the other players at the table. Make sure you check out their Kickstarter page for all the final components. This is just a prototype that you're seeing here, although it is pretty much done at this state. Yeah. All right, so each of the players is gonna to come to the table with one of those Chinese Zodiacs, which are just basically animals. All of these animals are gonna have variable player powers that are going to allow them to kind of break the rules throughout the game. And that's free for players to choose or you can draft these at the start of the game however you wish to pick these. They're each going to be represented by one of these tokens and all the tokens are going to start at the start space and the idea behind the game is you want to race them all the way to the finish line. And to do that you're going to be using eight cards. Each of these eight cards are going to be numbered one through eight. Six of them are going to correlate directly to this round circular board that you see here that is going to spin and move through the course of the game. The idea is that you're going to be playing one of these cards in front of you along with an amount of energy to try to power that and to guess or deduce what other players may be doing. But you do have some perfect information at the table because you can look around and see the actions that other players have played knowing that they can't play that action on the next turns. Yeah, and when you play your card, you're playing that card along with everybody else. Everyone puts their card face down with energy and flips over at the same time. So this is one of those things where you really have to get into each other's heads. And like Jeremy said, take a look at the information that's already on the table to deduce exactly what you want to do to make the most of every single turn. And at the start of the game, it's kind of interesting how you're going to kick off that by using the cards in your hand to gain some of that karma to use through the course of the game. Yeah, what's interesting is you play these cards throughout the game, you have to play them one after the other and go higher or spend some karma. So at the beginning of the game, everyone's gonna choose one of their cards to basically seed that process for the beginning of the game and flip that over. Depending on the number you start with, of course, if you start with a low number, that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility for the first portion so, yeah. of the game. If you play a higher number, it's going to give you less flexibility. So you play a higher number, though, you're going to get more karma. And then they've got some really interesting mechanics for how that karma then still exchanges hands before the very beginning of the game. All right. Each player is also going to begin with an X number of energy cards in their hand. When you look at these energy cards, they're very basic. They're numbered one through six. At the start of the game, every player is going to start with two ones, two twos, and then a number three. All of these cards are going to be played in conjunction with one of your action cards to take that action or to try to take that action through the course of the game. Now to start the game, as we said, it's very simple. Each of the players is going to pick one of the cards from their hand. Now they're going to look down at that very first card they played to try to understand what cards they can play. As David said, you want to play cards that are higher than the previous numbers that you played. So if you played a one, all the other cards are available. However, if you play a five, you want to play a six, seven, or eight. Anything lower is going to take some of that karma from your pool. And you, can, in fact, can't even play the cards if you don't have the karma to do so. Yeah, it brings up some interesting strategies, though, because if you did play a five and everyone's looking around the table thinking, OK, well, he's likely to play a six, seven, or eight. If you've got karma, you can kind of surprise everyone by play, using some karma to play a lower card and sort of reset your numbers. So if you'd played a five and then you use karma to play a two, then on your following turn, you can play anything higher than a two. Now how that karma works, if you play a number that is one lower, you're just spending one karma. For anything that is two or lower, away from that last card that you played, costs two karma. And again, as we said, this is a perfect information game. So at any given time, you can see the cards they previously played throughout the game, plus any of the karma that they may have left in their pool to use. Now you're probably wondering, you guys just talked about a lot of stuff, we don't even know what's going on, and you don't. Here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna pick one of the cards from your hand, and you're going to also have your energy cards secret in your hand as well. And what you're going to do is, everyone at the table at the same time is gonna have one of their action cards and one of the energy cards facing them, and then they're gonna lay them in front of them. At the same time, everyone's going to reveal those cards. In this case, I played a help with an energy that is three. Now, everyone knows the table what all the other players have done. You are going to do this in sequential order from number one all the way up to number eight with all the one actions taking place first, then the twos, then the threes, then the fours. These cards are broken down into three main types of cards that players are going to use. All of the green cards 
are basically movement cards. These are the cards that you're going to be playing and trying to move your animal up through the course of the race. All of the yellow cards are special cards that are typically going to allow you to gain more karma or going to allow you to gain more energy into your hand. And then there's also the blue card. The blue card is basically a repeat card that will allow you to repeat the previous action in that sequence that you've used. Yeah, it's really nice. And again, it's hard to explain this entire game without you having played a full round. But all these cards are going to relate to this rotating wheel here in the board. And these things will make sense when you realize that the rewards for the cards that you play, those actions that you take, are going to be changing throughout the game because this wheel here rotates throughout the game. Between each round, this wheel is going to rotate one more section so that the rewards around the outside of that wheel are going to change. And the way those rewards are given out can even change depending on the cards that have been played and the energy that was played with them. Say, for instance, as we seeded the, the start of the game, I had played a five and David had played a one. Those are our starting cards, and we're going to build sequentially off to the right of David's and off to the right of mine. The cards that we played this turn are both helps. I played a three energy with my help, and David played a one energy help. Now, we're just showing you what two players could do. Say the other players played different actions than what we had picked. So we first do the number one actions, which are the cheats for all the other players. David had already played his during the last round, so that doesn't count. It's just the current round. Then we're going to look at help and see whoever had played the most energy. But before we do that, we're going to add up the total values of all of the energy that was played for help at the table. That means every player that played, tail, uh, that played help, you're going to add up all that energy together. In this case, we have four, the three plus the one. Then we're going to look at help over here, and we're going to look at that numeric value. Is it one to four, or is it greater than five? In this case, it is one through four, meaning that you're going to follow this straight up, and you're going to do this particular action. All of these cards have built-in text on what happens when this card is played. Sometimes it's whoever played the highest energy card. Sometimes it is all the players that participated in that particular action. Plus, they also have what happens with the people that lost that action, meaning they played the lowest energy card. So sometimes it can be a harmful to you if you don't win those particular actions. There's a variety of different symbols around the outside of the board, too, that can sway or change the things that you get for those particular cards that you play. Yeah, and in fact, even the spaces that don't have a numeric value, for instance, the one that we had been on, this represents the number of players who'd played that card. So in this case, Jeremy and I both played the card, so that's two. So we would each get two karma in that case. If more people around the table had played it, this symbol equals the number of players who had played help on that round. And then on top of that, this action is going to do a little bit more for you. Yeah, that's going to allow you to exchange certain energy cards from your hand for higher energy cards, and there's a system by which that works as well. And you're going to keep going through all the players. So we've resolved our number twos, then you're going to resolve the threes, fours, fives, as long as they exist on the table. Those cards that you've played are going to stay out in front of you forever until you play the number eight card. The eight card allows you to scoop all the cards back in your hand with a caveat. You have to be the highest number energy. If you aren't, you have to keep that very first stack that you played in that row down. That has some shades of Concordia in that yeah. way. You're playing your cards out, and you're watching your tableau build, and you're also watching other players' tableaus build, so you start to recognize he can't walk this round, he can't cheat this round, and he can't run this round, so I know the values they may have collected on energy, and also know the values that they may have still in their hand. Yeah, and that's what this game really boils down to, and where a lot of the fun comes from, is when you're looking around the table, and you realize, okay, if I run this turn, I'm going to be able to go three, or maybe even four spaces on the track, and I look around, and everyone else has played run, then I might play run, even with a low energy, thinking, okay, I'm going to be the highest energy, I'm the only one with run. Now, you got to remember, there's enough cards here to make it a little bit more interesting, though, because that old repeat card could come out if you don't pay attention, and someone could repeat their run with more energy and beat you to the punch. Yeah, so it's all about deducing what people have in their hand, but also trying to use the right energy, because a lot of these are going to go to the next possible value if you go over a certain threshold. Yeah. And in that case, you want to play low energy, but you also want to play low enough where someone could just barely play higher than you, but also get that juicy spot. Yeah, so for example here, if walk were in this position right here, and you can see that if the combined energy were one to two, someone, whoever played the highest, is going to get four. Yeah. However, 
if too much energy is played and it's over three, that <laughs> same person is going to get zero yeah. on the walk. Yeah, so it's really a, a trying to deduce what everyone has at the table. And again, all of the green cards in your hand are movement cards. Those are the ones that are typically going to move your animal up through that race. All of the yellow cards are going to give you the more energy, so those are going to allow you to change up from one energy cards to two energy, all the way up to six energy cards, making sure that you get the actions that you want to do because you have higher numbers to do so. Now there's one more thing that we need to talk about, and that is movement within the water. Water movement works just like land movement. However, anytime you use your number eight card, that's the card that's gonna allow you to scoop all your cards back up. When you use this card and your animal is anywhere in this water, you have to permanently discard one of your energy cards back to the stack. And you probably would have collected a lot of energy by then, but also you really wanna move far in those areas before you have to use this card, otherwise you're gonna be getting rid of a lot of your energy. Yeah, it's another one of those interesting layers to the game too, because when you think of that exchange action where you're trading up for new energy, obviously you wanna get those fours, fives, and sixes so that you can really have some powerful turns. But at a certain point, you might wanna trade some of those in too, so that you can get a bunch of ones to use for this purpose and trade in those ones so you can hold on to your high value cards. I don't wanna go into a review, but I have to say I don't like race games and this is inherently a race game. However, the mechanics in the game, I don't think I've had more fun with a racing style game than I have with this. This is a really interesting, very simple game to teach and learn, but it has a lot of cool moments where you're looking around the table and you're like, oh man, I just wish I'd played one yeah. lower. Or I wish I'd played that card. I wish I'd recognized they had gotten that earlier. It's got those cool moments in it. Yeah, and in fact, those same moments where you're looking across the table and thinking, you're going to play this card, aren't you? Yeah. I've not played another game recent, in recent memory that had as much of that, except maybe the estates. Yeah. You know, the estate, just like Simply Complex's overall line, this game has that in spades. You're going to be sitting there wondering what someone else is going to do. They're going to do exactly what you didn't want them to do. You're going to be second guessing yourself. And all of that is going to be done in a really fun way. Fantastic little game called Race for the Chinese Zodiac. Three to five players. If you guys have any questions about it, make it in the comments below. Subscribe to us. Follow us on Twitter. Check out their Kickstarter. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.